this is also vulva. And uh, this patient, uh, there's diffuse scar here from a previous surgical operation, okay? And this patient has a known history of lichen sclerosis also, although I don't really have a great area to show you on this, um, this particular section of the lichen sclerosis, but they did have known lichen sclerosis and they previously had a surgery. area. So here's kind of their, not totally normal, but more normal looking epidermis, right? It's kind of atrophic because it gets over a scar, right? But that's just to give you an idea. That's what their normal skin for this area looks like. Sorry, trying to get the lighting level just right. Okay. And then let's go over to this thicker area that's acanthotic in the middle. This area has got acanthosis. Come on. Acanthosis, kind of hypergranulosis here, and the nuclei are a good bit larger and even a bit more atypical. See, look at those guys. Now, you know, atypia is in the eye of the beholder to some extent, but I mean, those to me look more enlarged and hyperchromatic. I'm sorry, I have to keep flipping it. It's, the disadvantage of glass slides is that you know, digital slides, the lighting is usually just perfect, and in glass slides, not so much. This is a very difficult and controversial area, but I thought it's probably good to make you aware of it because we do have to deal with this, and we encounter this from time to time, and I, um, I found it very challenging. But here we have and, and hypergranulosis, but no HPV change, no like real coilocytes, right? These little vacuoles here, that's not a coilocyte, right? That vacuole artifact is a totally normal thing to see around keratinocytes. Those nuclei are really tiny. Coilocytes will be up there in the gray layer and will have vacuoles a lot of times, but much bigger nuclei. The nuclei should be really large, like paradoxically larger at the top than you'd expect. So if it, if it were high grade dysplasia and had HPV positive, that would be H cell, high grade squamous intraepithelial lesion. Usually the thing about h cell is that h cell is going to be uh, full thickness atypia or, or at least like two-thirds to full thickness atypia. And usually the cells are very blue and basaloid because they have large, dark, hyperchromatic nuclei without much pink um, uh, keratin in, the, in them. So here, though, we have very like abundant pink, right? Like it's a, abundant uh, keratinization of the cytoplasm. You can see like the keratin filaments, oops, really prominent there, right? So usually that's why the uh, h cell usually has a very blue basaloid look to it um, and usually very atypical nuclei. This is much more subtle atypia to me. I mean, in the range that you could wonder, is this really atypical or is it reactive? So in the setting of lichen sclerosis, when I see areas of acanthosis with basal layer atypia, I start wondering about a different type of dysplasia, which is called DVIN, which stands for differentiated vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia. So VIN, vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia, VIN 1, 2, and 3, right, is the kind of older terminology that now corresponds to LCIL for low-grade squamous intraepithelial lesion, or which we, I, I basically ne almost never use that term in the vulva personally, um, or HCIL, which is the, the squam in situ, uh, basically, that's a HPV-driven, high-risk HPV-driven, okay? So that, that um, now we say LCIL and HCIL, which corresponds to the older VIN, um, system. Um, and you can still use both, but the, the most modern terminology from the last uh, criteria, the last uh, terminology system, the lower anogenital genital squamous terminology, uh, which is what stands for last, L-A-S-T, is uh, L-cell and H-cell, okay? And if, if this is 2021, I'm making this video. So if you're watching this many years in the future on YouTube, go and look it up because these, uh, these systems tend to change uh, over the years and new terminologies come up. So, but this is a different kind of VIN, vulvar intraepithelial uh, neoplasia, that's not HPV related. It falls outside of the H cell, L cell system. And this is called differentiated VIN because it's differentiated in the fact that it's not that ugly basaloid looking cells like you see in H cell, but instead it's very kind of glassy, eosinophilic, keratin producing uh, uh, cells with just some kind of subtle basilar atypia, okay? 
And this type of vein is, is important because it arises in the setting of lichen sclerosus usually, and it has a significant risk of progressing into invasive squamous cell carcinoma, okay? Uh, in fact, my understanding is that the risk of invasive squamous cell carcinoma is higher in this form of, of dysplasia than in the H cell, okay? I mean, it can happen in both, but I feel like these are the ones that, that seem to have more of a risk of becoming invasive squamous, even though they don't look that bad. H cell looks way uglier than this. I, I should have pulled an H cell to show you, but I didn't, didn't have one handy, I'm sorry. So in any case, these are um, not driven by HPV. The, what happens here is that P53 is, is abnormal. And if you do a P53 immunostain, you'll see diffuse staining along the basal aspect of this area compared to the background epidermis, which should just have kind of patchy, what we call wild type staining. I've also seen some examples that had null type P53, where P53 was completely wiped out in the DVIN area and, and the background normal skin had some patchy staining. So in any case, whenever I see lichen sclerosis, I'm always on the lookout for areas where I'm getting acanthosis, where I'm seeing basal atypia. Sometimes I've seen cases where they had scattered high level dying keratinocytes. I'm not sure if that's a specific feature, but I have noticed that before. So all those things make me, when I, when I see that in the setting of a, a patient with LS, then I start thinking about DVIN. I, oh, this case, look, this case had some dying keratinocytes up high there. Oh, and, uh, and then I'll do P53 or T67 also to see the proliferative activity here. It's, uh, those, neither of those things are perfect. I think they're kind of tricky to interpret. And usually in these cases, I show my gynecologic pathology colleagues to get help because I find this very subtle and difficult to diagnose. I think the literature on it, it's from what I've read, it's still the criteria for how exactly to diagnose it are, uh, are not perfect. It's somewhat vague and subjective. I hope I'm not offending any of the authors of those papers. And I'm, I'm certainly not the world's expert on this, but just know that there's a form of dysplasia that occurs in lichen sclerosis and it can progress to invasive squame. And it's called differentiated VIN, D-VIN. And I, I wish I had the P53 stain handy, but it worked really beautifully in that case. It was diffuse staining in, that, in the D-VIN area. Then. Okay. I know that's a hard one, but I wanted to make sure you guys knew about it.